Hello, and welcome to the 34th edition of The Bell Ringer. My name is Stacey Mankoff. I'm managing principal of The Mankoff Company, founder of After the Bell Events, and producer of The Bell Ringer. And today, I am delighted to welcome Todd Miller, who is the VP of Business Development and Partnerships for Chrome Away, to discuss innovation versus regulation, challenges for U.S. companies in the blockchain crypto space. Chrome Away is an innovative blockchain software company and builder of the Chromia blockchain, which is headquartered in Stockholm. Todd's primary focus is on developing solutions and market for the tokenization of real world assets, which include real estate, securities, and other alternative assets. Prior to working at Chrome Away, Todd was a senior leader at Fannie Mae, working on digital mortgages and technology solutions across the real estate value chain. So he brings a wealth of information, and I'd like to welcome you, Todd. Great, Stacey. Nice to be here. Nice to chat with you about the uh, about the this sort of exciting new area. So. I know, I know. So first, let's let's start off. What is the current uh, regulation and legislation situation in the United States when it comes to uh, digital assets? Well, sure. And, and I just wanted to just start off by saying that. Um, so this is not my direct area of expertise. Of course, regulation. There are a number of other organizations that viewers should take a look at, including um, Coin Center, which is here in Washington and is sort of an industry association. Mm -hmm. They have very good uh, content about uh, regulation, as mm -hmm. well as uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce tracks this, these issues very closely in like the Blockchain Council. But as a industry member, we, we also track um, regulation and law, not only here in the U.S., but in Europe and in Asia. And here in the U.S., I mean, as we'll we'll get into a little bit, there, there really doesn't exist comprehensive yet legislation or laws around cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Um, it's, it's really a function of sort of, it's handled in th three different areas. Today, just like the conventional market. So for example, payments, uh, you have to be a money service business or for commodities, it's, it's regulated by the Commodities Future Trading uh, Organization, CFTC. Yeah, yeah. No, CFTC. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, securities end up getting regulated by the SEC, but because digital assets can cross all three of these domains, industry participants like, uh, Chromeway are sort of stuck in the middle trying to figure out which type of legislation or which type of rules we need to comply with. So it's, it's quite complicated. Um, the use of legislators to accommodate the new developments in digital, in the digital and crypto world? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's certainly interest. There are, for, there's, for example, legislation that was introduced this year in the House of Representatives uh, on stablecoin legislation and on, on other digital assets. Um, and the White House also issued a paper on this topic. But the place that we're still at today is because Congress hasn't acted, the SEC, the CFTC, um, uh, and, fin you know, in the financial uh, um regulation other financial regulatory entities have really focused on the way that markets are um regulated today so for example the sec hasn't promulgated any rules about digital assets all they've done is pursued enforcement actions so it it forces companies like ours to sort of read the tea leaves in terms of what who these enforcement actions are targeted as and, instead of being able to abide by more transparent rules. It's very um, interesting because you know there's a Supreme Court case going on, I think tomorrow, um, sort of challenging the these the SEC's uh, tribunals. For sure. And a lot of these cases have gotten overturned by the courts. So for example, he you probably know Stacy, the one of the big cases that everyone is really looking at is about the uh, Bitcoin ETF, uh, an mm -hmm. exchange traded fund. Right. This would be a big 
a plus for the industry because it would allow institutional investors to get access to like Bitcoin, potentially like Ethereum and other digital assets through a more conventional ETF instead of direct holding. Mm -hmm. So this would be, but the SEC originally brought suit against, um, it was a gray, um, um, uh, one of the ETF providers, Grayscale, mm -hmm. uh, others are waiting like BlackRock and so forth and Fidelity. Uh, this got overturned by the court and we're hoping that it'll eventually go through, so. So how does the U.S. compare with Europe or Asia when it comes to legislation and regulation? Yeah, I mean, considerably behind. Uh, in Europe, uh, the MICA legislation was passed. This is called the Market in uh, Crypto Assets Regulation. And MICA provides uh, like a regulatory umbrella for all of Europe in mm -hmm. these areas and trying to sort of synchronize uh, national laws, uh, mostly around sort of stable coins. Uh, there are still some issues, for example, non-fungible tokens like NFTs mm -hmm. and like uh, capping certain stable coins are still issues, but at least it provided an initial framework and then when you look at specific countries, for example, in Switzerland, they've passed uh, uh, legislation around a ledger security. And what they've done essentially is they've said, well, um, what's going on with digital assets is really consistent with the notion of, it's called dematerialization, meaning even in our own markets, we've gone from order books, physical books, to databases, and now we're proposing to store this, record this data in blockchains. And what the Swiss said is it's really just another form of dematerialization. So you can record a, a settlement of an asset on Ledger, and it's called a Ledger security. So a very practical approach towards it. Uh, if you look at the UAE, um, again, something that we haven't done here, they've set up an authority called like the Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority to oversee synchronization of these things. The same in uh, in Dubai, in uh, like the UAE or Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've focused on specific problems like custody. In the US uh, today, it appears like a conventional custody agent of an asset. To hold a digital asset, they would have to have a large reserve that's not true in some other countries, so. So what do you see in the future development? What what can business leaders and entrepreneurs here do in order to foster development? Yeah, I mean, the good news is that despite all the problems, North America, the US remains as a the largest market for uh, digital assets. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're at something like 25% of um, of uh, global uh, transactions. Um, I think I read a, a chain analysis, which tracks these types of things. I think mm -hmm. they said something like one over a trillion dollars of, of uh, transactions were done on chain uh, last year. So it's, you know, that we're still a significant player. We're split between DeFi transactions, decentralized finance transactions. Mm -hmm. We have large centralized exchanges like Coinbase. So we have the infrastructure here. We have the capital raising um, capabilities, the best in the world, but we need this foundation for regulation still. And so as, you know, as a business leader, um, you know, uh, they need to work with their legislature, their congressperson, uh, their state official to be able to advocate for this regulatory structure, because I think the industry wants this, mm -hmm. but, you know, we're still sort of blocked from full, a full sense of growth because of this. I think secondly, I mean, this is, this is sort of inevitable and we're seeing this in other countries in terms of the growth of these assets, um, U.S. Treasuries have been tokenized, and now it's more than, I think, $700 million in U.S. Treasuries 
um, mostly by foreign investors, uh, still small with regard to the entire market, but a very significant growth. And I think businesses and other financial services entities, um, service providers can start getting involved in the sector uh, through um, regulatory compliant ways by starting to work with the technology uh, from uh, engaging with providers of this, whether they be blockchains or consultants and start really looking at this. So when the change does come there, you know, they're ready to take full advantage of it. Sure. Well, thank you, Todd, for all your insights. And I'd also like to say that Todd will be one of the panelists on our After the Bell, which will be held on December 7th in Washington, D.C. And I encourage all of you who are in the D.C. metro area to join us for a really um, high-level discussion and networking event in the evening. And again, thank you, Todd, and thank you all for listening. I look forward to seeing you at our next bell ringer. Bye-bye.